Hello everybody. For those of you who are new here, I'm Chaz. About a year and a half ago, I went viral on TikTok and I've since gained over 560,000 followers. I did that by telling my true stories. So I'll give you a summary of my true life story today because it's really just one big story, my life story. Here we go. I was born in a small town in Kentucky. My parents were alcoholics, they were abusive, and they were poor. When I was about five years old, my mom and dad got into a horrible fight in which my mother woke up one night to find my father pointing a shotgun to her forehead. She grabbed that shotgun out of his hand, she cut her hand up, and she split his head wide open with the butt of the shotgun. I woke up, walked into the room, and found my parents covered in blood. And I watched my mother chase my father off with a shotgun. She shot at him, and she hit a lady across the street. That lady did not press charges on my mother because she wasn't supposed to be on that side of town cheating on her husband. This happened in a small town called Eminence, Kentucky. My mother moved my two brothers and I around quite a bit from Florida to another town in Kentucky until we finally got back to Eminence when I was about nine years old. She was running from Child Protective Services because she had neglected us and malnourished us. I was skinny and hungry and my baby teeth rotted out before I could even get into the first grade. My mother was definitely not the kind of mother who took care of her kids properly. When I was 11 years old, my mother met a new man named Herbie, and she married him. And she moved my two brothers and I into a big house with her husband Herbie and their newborn baby daughter, my little sister Chrissy. Mom and Herbie wanted to pretend they had this nice little family with just the three of them, so they put my brothers and me up in the attic where we stayed for a whole year. We were only allowed to come downstairs to take a poop and to eat a meal. Otherwise, we were trapped upstairs with nothing but a 12-inch black and white TV and an old record player and a few little records. But that marriage didn't last very long, and my mom and her husband split up when I was 12 years old. Then we moved into a government-subsidized apartment where my mother gave me and my brothers much more freedom to get into trouble. And that's what we did. My neighbor's uncle molested me. He lured us in with the promise to take us to a big amusement park called Kings Island in Ohio. That night, we went back to his house and he molested me for the rest of that entire summer under the guise that I would be going to his house to do odd jobs such as painting his barn. I would come home with that money and my mother would take half of it. She was virtually my first pimp, and there would be many more after. When I was 15, a 32-year-old woman moved two apartments away from us. She had two young daughters, ages six and eight. She seduced me and she groomed me, and within months, I married this woman and stayed married to her for a year. She was abusive, demanding, possessive, jealous, and she aggressively sexualized me up to five times a day. Feeling completely trapped in that marriage, I tried to take my own life one night. When that didn't work out, I ended up running away to Chicago when I was 16 years old. I didn't know anybody in Chicago, but somehow I made it work. I worked at a Sizzler Steakhouse as a server the first year. I lived with a sugar daddy who was 42 years old, and I attended the High School for Performing Arts in Chicago for almost one year. I was a voice major, and I was there to sing. But things didn't work out with my sugar daddy, so I ended up leaving him, leaving my school, and becoming a stripper at a bar called Normandy. Over the next few years, I dated a couple of guys. One of them was really wealthy. He was from South America, and I traveled to South America with him. I also lived in Miami, New York, and Los Angeles. On my 18th birthday, I posed for my first nude centerfolds, and by the time I turned 21, I had already done a whole string of adult videos. I did it to feed myself. At age 22, I was still a stripper at a bar called JJ's up on the far north side of Chicago, but I did odd jobs on the side as well. I worked for an elderly man who owned a string of apartment buildings, and whenever somebody got evicted from an apartment, Apartment, I would go in and paint the apartment. But one day when he was attacked by a meth head who was a former tenant, I beat the shit out of that meth head and I went to jail. Later that night after I got out of jail, I went out to a bar called Lucky Horseshoe. And it was the luckiest night of my life because that's where I met my husband, Merrick. He's from Poland, he offered me a drink, we went home together that night, and I've been with him ever since. It's been 31 years, and he is my husband. In the early 90s, my husband became a foster parent, and we received an infant named Anthony who was seven and a half months old. At age three, we were able to adopt Anthony legally, and Anthony's birth mother had another baby named Patrick, and he became our foster child one week after birth. He was premature. After a few years, we were able to adopt Patrick as well. Watching our children grow up was one of the happiest times of my life. But on April 19th, 2000, my little brother William, who was my best friend, was found hanging from a tree in his gay, abusive lover's backyard. And I knew that my brother had not taken his own life, as the coroner had concluded. But neither the coroner, the police, a judge, or the district attorney agreed to give me any of the evidence surrounding my brother's death, even though the case was closed. They were covering something up and I wanted to get to the bottom of it. It would take me 14 years and the Open Records Act just to be able to obtain the photos from the death scene. And when I did, I sent them to a pathologist in New York who told me that without the other evidence, he couldn't make a conclusion about how my brother died. 
Well, all of that evidence had been destroyed. Evidence that was sitting in the coroner's office in Washington County, Indiana. The grief, uncertainty, and lack of closure in my brother's death led me into a deep depression that lasted over a decade. Between the years 2009 and 2019, I didn't work, I didn't go anywhere, I barely ate anything, and I withered away down to 155 pounds. I was skin and bones. I would wake up every morning puking my guts out with stomach acid. I went to so many doctors to try to find out what was wrong with me, so many specialists, so many tests, and nobody found anything physically wrong with me at all. Apparently, it was all in my head, and it was all related to my grief and my PTSD. At that time, I seriously contemplated just leaving this world. I almost didn't want to be here anymore, and I figured, as one last resort, I would try something a little unconventional. I had done my research for two years about magic mushrooms and psilocybin, and I watched a lot of videos with Paul Stamets and Terrence McKenna. I realized if I was ever gonna find any semblance of joy or peace or happiness in this life again, I was gonna have to take drastic measures. So that's what I did. I managed to get a hero's dose of psilocybin mushrooms, five and a half grams. I consumed those mushrooms and I had a trip that changed my life permanently. I fell into a deep meditative state in which I was transported to a realm of truth, love, and light where I encountered an entity that convinced me 100% to this day that it is the creator of all things, that which we call God. We had an amazing conversation. By the time I came down from that trip, I was more healed than I've ever been in my whole entire life. I went out, got myself a job at a shitty gas station. I worked there for four years. And then in August of 2022, I uploaded my first video to TikTok. At first, I was just lip syncing and dancing like everybody else. But one night while lying in bed with my husband, I had a flashback to when I was molested as a child. And I realized that I must not be alone. There must be many, many other people who have experienced sexual abuse as children who just don't talk about it, who still can't talk about it, who are still processing it, just like I was and I am and I probably always will but I've gotten to a point in my healing where I'm able to talk about it. And I decided the very next day when I came home from work to hit record and tell the story about how my neighbor's uncle molested me when I was 12 years old. That story went viral immediately. So I told another story about how my husband had adopted our children in the 90s. And that story went even more viral. Since then, I've continued to tell my true stories on TikTok. And now I'm ready to tell them on YouTube as well. So this is just the beginning. This is just a summary of my life story. Thank you for watching. Please hit the subscribe button, tap like, and leave a comment if you enjoyed this video. I really appreciate it.